everyone, welcome back to Wix Fix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Ryan and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create a custom form and depending on the user's inputs, it can lead them to different pages on your website. I actually recently received a comment asking if this was possible. So I think they were wanting to create a custom form and maybe have a drop down in that form. And depending on which option in that drop down that the user selects and then when they submit the form, then it takes them to different pages on the website. So let's go ahead and do that in today's video. So the first thing that I kind of want to do is go ahead and just add a couple pages. So what I'm gonna do is come over to add. We'll just add a very basic about page. And we'll call this one page one. And we'll also just go ahead and change this text here to another color, just so it's very obvious that it's working correctly. And now what I want to do is add another page. We'll just make this one a services. We'll call this one page two, and we'll make this text red. Again, this is just an example to show you that it's working correctly. And we'll call this one page two. Did I do that for this one as well? No, I didn't. So we'll call, the, we'll call this page one. So now we have everything that we're gonna need for this video. We have a page one and a page two. And now we can go ahead and start creating our custom form. Now for today's video, it does require a little bit of code but I will say it's not that complicated. And as usual, I will provide the code on our website. So there will be a link in the description if you wanna just check it out and maybe even copy and paste it onto your own website. But if you do copy and paste it on your website, I highly suggest you check out the rest of this video to learn how this code works so you can apply it correctly on your own site. But to enable the coding section of our site, we need to come over to dev mode and turn this on. Now, since we enabled dev mode, we actually have access to this area in the ad panel for inputs. So let's just drag this one out right here. This one will be our name input. Then if we come back over to add inputs, we'll see this option for drop downs. So we'll just drag this one out here as well. Perfect. The next thing we're gonna need is a button to allow our users to actually, well, submit their form just like that. And the last thing I want to add here is a little text element. And this little text element is basically just gonna say, thank you. And we'll just center it just like this for now. Okay. And we'll also go ahead and change this button text to say submit. Great. So the next thing that we need to do is actually adjust this dropdown. So if we come over to this dropdown, we go into settings. We want to change this placeholder text to maybe something like choose a page. Perfect. And now we need to actually manage the choices. So in this video, we only have, we only created two extra pages. So we only need two options here. So what we're gonna do is edit the label. We're gonna say page one. I'm gonna copy it so that way I can come into this little three dots and say edit value. And the value is very important here. So even like how the characters are like capital P and then the space, everything needs to be like, you need to be wary of how that is created here as well. So what we're gonna do is do the same thing, but this one's gonna be page two. And we're gonna edit the value for this one to make it page two here as well. Okay, so the next thing that I would like to do is go ahead and change the name of some of our elements before we start coding. So for this button, you'll notice that the ID is button one. So instead I want to change it to submit button. And then for this text right here, we can just call this one thanks text, just like that. And also with this thank you text, let's also default this value to hidden. That way it doesn't actually appear when the user first lands on the page. But with all that said, we can go ahead and start coding. So what I want to do first is here in the very top, we need to import an API. And this one is going to be Wix location from Wix location. Perfect. 
And you'll notice it's grayed out and that's because we don't have any code in here basically calling that API yet. So once we start adding more code inside of here, you'll notice that that is no longer grayed out. But what I want to do now is create a constant. We'll call this one just btn for button. And all we want to do is basically call the submit button, just like that. And now if we go down a little bit, we can go ahead and say when the button is clicked. So we're going to say btn on click. We're going to want something to happen. And inside of this little function, what I want to do is actually create another constant. We're going to call this one drop down value. And this is going to equal the drop down one dot value. So if you remember over here, when we actually managed the choices and came over here and said edit value, that's what this little variable is getting. It's getting the value from our drop down right here. So what we're going to want to do now is we're going to say if drop down value is double equal to, and we're going to say page one because with a capital P and a space and everything, because again, if we come over to manage choices and look at the value, that's how it is spelled here. So I want to say if it's equal to that value, then we want to go to page one. So we're going to say Wix location dot two, and we're going to say page dash one oh, with a slash in the front. And basically what this is, is if we come over to our pages, go to page one and go to SEO, we'll notice that that is our URL slug. It is slash page dash one. And that's basically what I put in right here. But you'll notice that we also have a second option with a second page that we want to go to. So what we're going to say is else if I'm going to say drop down value is double equal to page two with a capital P, otherwise it won't work. Then we want Wix location to go to page dash two, which is going to be our page two URL slug. And then if they choose not to input anything into this drop down, then we want else and we want the thank you text to show. So we'll say thanks text to show. Now in a minute, I will show you a way to make this a required field, but for now, this is all the text that you will need to use. So if we go ahead and press preview and I go ahead and type in my name and I say, I want to go to page one and press submit, it's going to take us to page one. And if I go back and I say, Ryan two, I want to go to page two and then press submit. It's going to take us to page two. And last but not least, if I say Ryan three and I don't select a page and I press submit, our little thank you text is going to show up. So the text is working great. Now I will say if you have a lot of options, this code might get a little bit longer. You might need a little bit more else ifs before your else. So you want to, if you have like five options, you'll basically need to copy this little area right here over and over to make sure that it works correctly and create each one of these for each one of your pages that you're trying to drive your users to. But let's say this dropdown is a required field. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and duplicate this home page real quick. And we're gonna kind of adjust this a little bit. So what I want to do here first is actually select this submit button and we're gonna come down to the default values and turn off this enabled. Or we want to uncheck this enabled option here. And now what I want to do is under this constant up here, let's create a new constant. We'll call this drop down. 
and this is going to equal just the drop down, just like that. And all we need to do is say drop down on change. I'm going to create a mini function here. And when that changes, then we can grab the button and we can enable it. Just like that. So now you'll notice that the button is grayed out. And if we go ahead and press preview and we type in Ryan four, you'll notice that the button is still grayed out. But as soon as we change it to page two, now we are able to submit the form and it will lead us to a new page. But that's basically gonna wrap it up for today's video. And again, if you want to use this code on your own website, there's gonna be a link in the description to one of our blog posts with the code. So you can literally just copy and paste it and edit the code just a little bit to make it work for you. But if you like the video, please go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more Wix and EditorX content coming out really soon. Thank you all again, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.